you know, I've been up on this podium plenty this year, and, and at times, um, even after wins, just been disappointed in how we've played um, because I thought there was a better version of ourselves out there. And, and, and you get a version, you get a vision in your head of what you see uh, from a group that, that you know is in there that has a chance to be really special, and this is it. Like, I mean, you, you saw us as engaged defensively. Uh, that, that is a very talented Oral Roberts team offensively. And for us to, you know, hold them to 25 in the second half, to hold them to under 24% from three, under 35% from the field is terrific. Um, uh, let's go ahead and run this back. I mean, I thought we had a great crowd. I'd love to get a few more uh, on Saturday. Um, but this is that version that, that's in us, uh, and we need to continue to work to be that version consistently. And, and if we do, we have a chance to be special. Um, you know, what happened at the end, you know, obviously I got a ton of respect for Paul Mills and, and Oral Roberts and the run that they made last year and the success that, that he's built in, in, in that program. Uh, you see the emotions of the game. Um, you saw two teams playing until the end and some things spilled over. Um, that's not anything that I want this program to be a part of. Some situations that are going to be some learning experiences for myself and our group as we move forward. Um, but, you know, anything that, you know, from our end, I, I will apologize to Oral Roberts and, and Coach, Coach Mills. Um, but I also ask our guys to play to the end, and uh, we played to the end tonight. Happened with Lufile, the big guy that got upset where, where things were trying to de-escalate, and then it seemed like it revamped up again. Yeah, Dom. Like I, I, I don't, I don't know. And and for me to sit here uh, emotionally still charged up in the game and to rehash what happened at the end, um, that's not fair to the entire to, to the entirety of the situation. You worried you may have suspension come out of this from the league again? I like I said, you know, we'll have to go and evaluate everything as we move forward. He returns on Dez's knee. Any, any early comments um, on that? He, he said um, it was like a like a knee to knee bone bone bruise type thing. Um, I hope it's just that, um, but you, you just never know until you sit on it for a night and see how it responds. Pretty close game. You're definitely in control, and then the second half really uh, kind of exploded into that huge lead. Is that like a statement? How would you define that? Yeah, I mean, like. We settled in. I thought we were pretty good for, for the better part of the game, except for maybe that five, six minute stretch towards the end of the first half. And, and we let them get to their sweet spots a little bit. And um, that's why we game plan to keep them out of their sweet spots. And we talked about that a lot at halftime. Um, you know, we were able to execute that better. And obviously then Sam was terrific in the second half and, and really helped us gap some things. 20 or 40 minutes, but 21 points on 25 shots. That has to be about how you drew it up. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know the young man, he's so talented, he's going to get some. Uh, you make him a volume guy, you want to make him a volume guy, and, and we did. Um, you know, I mean, you can talk loads about Tyree, you can talk loads about Bo, um, but anytime you hold a talented young man like that, you know, like that, to, you know, 23 on 25 shots, that's a team effort. What kind of player can Bowden Scumber be here? <laughs> You know, um, he's got a chance. He's got a, a real chance. I mean, you can see the strides. I think that the beauty of Bowden is he understands what's, what's important. You know, he's one of the all-time leading scorers in, in North Dakota State high school basketball history, yet he knows that to get on the floor, you've got to be able to defend. And, and he's competitive. He's defending. Um, and I think slowly you're starting to see the game slow down for him a little bit offensively as well. 20 minutes you've played that second half. I think that's pretty first right there, Ross. Um, you know, to be that engaged, um, it just across the board, you know, the principals uh, up in our locker room are defend, rebound, take care of the ball. And, you know, we win the glass by nine. We only turn it over eight times. We make more or we attempt make more free throws than they attempt. Um, that's really good buys in basketball. You know, I, I would say emotionally charged win. Obviously, you played extremely well. How do you kind of keep them level and, and, and come out with something similar on Saturday with everything that's going to go on then with, with, with saying goodbye to those three guys. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's, that's the hard yet easy part because that's what those three in particular and, and AK, um, this is about Bison basketball. And, and that message goes loud and clear to um, the guys leaving this year, anybody coming in. Um, but yeah, you can see the name and, and the stats and all those things. that Tyree gets his thousandth point. You know, really cool, special deal. These guys have accomplished a lot of great things individually, uh, but they'll tell you that's, you know, the championships and 
three straight Summit League championship games, that, that's where they want this program to continue to. And they need to continue to do exactly what they've done and make it about Bison basketball, not who they are. Was that a little more than you expected from 10 from McBride? I mean, he's shown that earlier in the season. Uh, that's, a, that's a talented young man. He can really go off the bounce. Um, he's been playing more and more. Um, no, uh, not at all. I, I think he's – I mean, you can see them kind of like, you know, developing in him maybe into the next max and just their system. Place alone now. I know you have two games to go, but and have the season sweep on Oral Roberts. How big a deal is that now with two games left? It's a big, it's a big deal. I thought we grew today, Dom, and that's what we're trying to do this year. We're trying to grow. Um, you know, those seeding implications are certainly happening. It's that time of year, um, but I'm just pleased. I thought we played a really good version, um, and I'm looking forward to uh, getting back together tomorrow and getting organized as we move forward for Saturday. Why tonight? I mean, you've been waiting, you've been waiting for this game all year, and then it shows up right when you need it when you want it. Here's one of the greatest. I've been doing this for 20 some years, and Coach Sash has got the, one of the greatest lines. He said, "It's a great game and a messed up profession," um, and, and it's so true at times because you see something so clearly, Mike, as a coach, and you're just trying to grab that. The one thing that that I have thought a lot about too is is you know, you, and, it, and it just goes back to the only answer I have for you is college basketball. How does Baylor, number one in the country, lose two at home? You know, how does? Um, Purdue, number three, go to Rutgers and, you know, get beat. You know, like how do, how do we lose at home to Western and go on the road and beat them? And, you know, it's college basketball. And, and um, I think I've thought a lot about it as a son of a football coach. You know, football coaches or football teams, you have a week to turn around and, and go. And, and you kind of get that identity and, and you're engaging. You're really mentally engaging yourself, you know, in Bison football's case, 15, 16 times. We're doing that 30 plus times. We're, we're, we, did, we did that 10 times and, you know, uh, we did that five times in 10 days, two different times. I mean, these are, these are kids, you know, and it's my job to continue to poke the right buttons um, to figure out a way to try to bring that out of them. And, you know, I think that's, maybe I need to self-reflect earlier in the season, but a little bit of our MO and our successes is we've been pushing those right buttons towards an important time of the year. Really available had AK available was, was throwing Rada in there kind of random or is that something you feel like you, he's earned in practice? Yeah, I mean it was just a situational thing to be honest with you. I didn't give it a, a whole bunch of thought. You know, I, I love Kobe. He, he just is a reflection of again a guy behind the scenes that I want this program to be about. Um, just gave him a gave him an opportunity with 12 seconds left. Playmakers on the team and like it's not really a typical build. How fun is it? For you as a coach to have that many guys who can set each other up that well. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's and that's what we talked about. You know, when when we went when we went on that stretch, and now we've won nine of ten. And before, I mean, we're playing. I, I still, I still argue with you. Like, it's no question who our best players are. Make no mistake. But Grant Nelson and and Andrew Morgan are really talented dudes, and they were out. You know, and and we're still able to win games and and survive some of that down the stretch. Um, so we've got a lot of parts, and those parts are, you know, Malik played 19 minutes today. Morgan gave us, you know, a huge, huge minutes. Um, you know, obviously Bo off the bench. Um, it, it's important. Uh, you know, we talked about like on the eight year availabilities earlier this week about the best version of yourselves. That sure looked like your best 40 minutes to me, Rocky. Is that how you feel about this game? Yeah, you know, especially in the second half, I think um, our urgency, our energy, um, our our execution. Our ability to lock in was, was the best it's been all season. Um, we got to find a way um, this Saturday and the next Saturday to carry that 20 minutes over for, for two more full games. How big was it, obviously, to get the, to, to beat them and overtake second place? It's the, that was the goal this, this couple of games. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's huge. Um, that was a big game. Shout out to Bison Nation for, for showing out for us. Um, they really helped us a lot in that game and especially in that second half, you know, just giving us, pumping us up with energy and, um, you know, when they're loud, it makes us, you know, energetic on defense and that's where it starts for us. Um, but yeah, obviously that was a huge win for us and um, just looking forward to Saturday. Defensively, they, um, what were they, three-pointers, they were, what, seven of 30, Ace Miss got 21, but it wasn't, it's like you never exploded. What was defensively what you guys do? Yeah, I mean, obviously, Ace Miss is, you know, one of the best players in the country, let alone, you know, the conference. And um, we had a, a game plan for him. And, um, you know, we know he's going to get his shots up. He's going to get his points. Um, I think the biggest thing for us was containing the other guys. 
Um, you know, they're more of the role guys, and um, just when they miss shots, we we focused on all of us down there rebounding. Um, and uh, you know, in the second half, I really think we executed that pretty well. In the second half, there you guys were up five, and the next thing we knew, it was you were up twenty. What was that stretch? What happened during the stretch? What did you, what did you say? Yeah, um, we strung stops together. Like I said, um, our urgency was at an all-time high, especially in that second half. Um, we were all five of us were crashing the defensive glass, and then we got out and pushed a little bit, um, got some shots at the front of the rim, um, and got some inside-out looks for three. And, and, and that's Bison basketball. That's what we want to do for, for the rest of the season. Uh, where's, the, where's the urgency been this whole year? Because I think everybody's been kind of waiting for that out of this team this whole year, right? I and mean, I mean, tonight, I think we all finally saw it. And so what it was just was ORU? Was it the last home games? What was the, what was the key? Um, you know, I think it's been there in, in little stretches. Um, and that's, that's been our, our next step as a team for, for a while now is, is being able to um, have that for a full 40 minutes, a full game. Um, you know, we're still working towards that. Saturday and then next Saturday as well. Andrew Morgan, nine points in eleven minutes on seventy-five percent shooting. How, how? I mean, how big is it to have him and, and for you to be able to get uh, maybe a little bit more of a breather than Sam <laughs> and have that uh, have that production? I mean, it's huge. Um, the guy's extremely talented. Obviously, he's a pretty big body. Um, yeah, I mean, giving me a rest, him getting comfortable out there. I've been challenging him to use his voice a little bit more, be a defensive leader out there, because he has all the skills um, to be, you know, an all-conference player in next year, year after that, um, things like that. So, you know, I've just been challenging him to be be more vocal and, and be more of a leader out there when he is out there. Your comments on the type of player that Bowden Schoenberg can be here. I mean, he was verbal, I will say that, and uh, extremely pesky defensively on Amos. I mean, that was, that was an impressive stretch for him. Yeah, I mean, um, first thing, I mean, when you talk about a dog, it's Bowden Skunberg. I mean, he's that to a T. He brings a different type of energy and um, confidence to this team. You know, I think we see it when um, – there was a few times tonight that I noticed when he would was dogging Ace Miss for a good 10, 15 seconds, and then the crowd starts getting into it, and it's just infectious. Um, and that's really just something that he's really stepped up and, and brought to this team this year, and it's been awesome to see. Like a little pushing and shoving. All handle, all handle. You know, I think when Bowden was was all over Ace that stretch there, the crowd did get into it, which which is you don't often see that in the basketball the game where the the crowd's cheering for a kid playing defense one on one. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's just infectious energy, um, and it just brings a different type of of confidence to us. And then when we're able to get stops and and contain, you know, their best player. Um, we can get out and run and, and, you know, just have fun playing basketball.